And, hey guys, welcome back. Um, it's that time again. Um, well, we're at the point where we're going to be taking these heads off. Finally. <laughs> um, we're at the point where everybody wants to see the heads come off. But before I set up and everything, I uh, did come down in this hole and I found the tip of the injector. Um, I think maybe there's more to it, which I didn't see, but it's this cap. And over here, as you can see, all these other caps are different. So this injector number one, um, I think it's got a different, it's a, it's a different cap. So I don't know, maybe, I wouldn't think that would have anything to do with the misfire. Possibly maybe the wrong injector, but so, um, but there's, there's a few more things, a couple more things we need to take off, and it's this fuel line that's attached to the back head, we gotta take that off, and then what we gotta do is loosen up our rocker arms so we can pull these rods out, and we can take this we can take the um, gasket out <clears throat> so we can get to our head bolts. There's four across the top. There's going to be two down here. I think that's for the gasket itself. And then we got bolts back here two three four there's four bolts keep in mind um these are brown and these are gray <clears throat> same thing over here these ones are silver <clears throat> four across the bottom and then we got brown across here we have to loosen up these rocker arms so we can actually get to these bolts okay and when you loosen these up, uh, you have to follow the pattern. There's a certain sequence. <clears throat> if you don't uh, follow the sequence, uh, you're going to risk warping the head itself. So we want to avoid that. Since these aren't really cheap. Um, about 600 600 or 600 dollars plus um for one head on a three four um three four liter v6 engine um so where i left off um i thought i was gonna leave this back header exhaust header on but i I didn't. I chose to take it all the way off. Uh, upon that, um, these two bolts, yeah, you guessed it. Uh, I broke them. I broke them completely off. So instead of messing around with that, I just, <laughs> I got up, up under there with a uh, couple extensions and I just wrenched it. <clears throat> Put all my might into it because it was, they were pretty tight. <clears throat> and other than that, um, we should be ready to pull these heads off. So, I'm going to get you guys set up here so you can see. See what I see. Do you see what I see? Who remembers that song? <laughs>
Okay. I'm just gonna get over here and take this off. I gotta see what size that is. 17 mil, maybe? No. Let's go down. Yep. I'm gonna put them over here. Yep. 17 was a little loose. 16's loose. Maybe it's a deep well. I can probably try. Probably try a half inch deep well. I don't think I need deep well. Because that's not tight at all. Wow. Okay, so I didn't need to um, put it on a, my ratcheting wrench. I just came right on. Okay, so that's a little nut that came off of there. Half inch. Yep, if it's half inch. Then just kind of wiggle it off of there like that, and it's away from the head. <clears throat> that one we don't have to do. Um, we can stick the nut right back on that uh, stud so we don't lose it. We only need to. Next, <sighs> we're gonna we're gonna loosen up those rocker arms. For this, I have eight millimeter. Then eight. Eight millimeter socket. And we're gonna loosen these up. There, cut that one loose. Okay. Let's go down the line. Loosen the zip. And we'll be able to take out our rods. <coughs> so, um, we can get to those head bolts. These are definitely tight also. But, um, I think you can break these off, of course, if you go the wrong way with them. <clears throat> so if you do these on your 3-4, or any engine that has these one-step um, rocker arm fasteners. Um, just be careful. So far, these have been too tight. <laughs> oh, jeez. mentioned before earlier when I first did a video I think I mentioned that um, I was hearing some something like maybe like a rod or a, a rod uh, knock or, or a lifter sound sounded more like a lifter than a rod so maybe they were in tandem and have a bad lifter all together so um, I'm probably gonna have to see exactly which lifter might have to 
No, I won't have to. Okay. And this needs just enough so I can get that rod up out of that uh, dent. Get it on the leaves. Yeah, it did. Okay. You gotta get these rods up out of here so you can take the um, the lower intake gasket plenum. Just the lower intake gasket off of there. And we'll have access to our head bolts. It's the moment you guys have been waiting for. Still a little more. Uh, you don't have to take all these. You don't have to take these all the way out. But. Um, if you're reusing these rods. Oops, I don't know yet. I might keep them. into their original hole just for now so I don't get them mixed up um, they're supposed to go if you ever do take these out they're supposed to go in the same hole that they came out of. So not sure. I uh, think maybe you'll be able to yeah, see with the bottom. I wouldn't think it would matter when you first put them in because they're both both ends are the same. So So it's going to be eight, <coughs> eight total bolts. Um, these black ones, there's only two on each, and they're the uh, looks like they're like the push rod guide um, for this engine. Yeah, the push rod guide. Uh, so far, when I've been tearing these down, is I have noticed that there were Velcro gaskets even on the upper intake. They're mostly fell pro, which is good. And I don't know what the head gaskets are. <clears throat> That's what I'm waiting to see. We'll get to actually inspect the gasket too. See exactly that, um, where it failed on this number one number one in cylinder or even if it failed at all it might be it might not be the gas we can know those are pretty loose okay all these are all off all right <clears throat> some of these i might i don't know i might have to 
Right. Might have to take off. It's these two inner bolts that I might have to take off. Because I still don't have any clearance to get in between to, to get those off. So, uh, let me get a box. To put those in. Yeah, I think I'm just going to take these all the way off. Uh, or, well, maybe just one. Yeah, maybe. No? Yeah, I have to do two. Both of them. There is a little something right here that can fall off if you can see that slides up and out of there keep that on okay. looked <clears throat> you almost look cracked in a way but not really room. I'm just going to take all of these off. So. <clears throat> Might as well get them out of the way. I don't think I'll have enough clearance. Okay. And then take these push rods out. Keep them in order. Okay. <clears throat> I can take the gasket off of this, like so. Keep it with that, like so. Your 
hands start to get oily. <laughs> to do this with my hands because these rocket arm bolts are sold along come on there you go okay. So, um, once these come off, we can kind of do a visual a little bit. We'll make a visual call and take a look around my pistons, the piston heads, the tops of them, and see exactly what she looks like. how clean it is and whatnot so far um, you know I've been doing regular oil changes and before this I'd ran a few um, few things of fuel system cleaner through and I do also a engine cleaner when I do oil changes. Uh, there goes my freaking pack again. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, that was only a few times I did that. So far, it's pretty good. these ones this way okay now this gasket okay. and this one right over here and voila this is how my setup is if you guys, guys can see okay everything together and in order especially on the rocker arms and the push rods with the gaskets you do not want to mix them up I mean you can I don't know you probably notice the difference but uh, so you can see the camshaft directly. Let's get these gaskets out, up and out of out of the way. Okay, there's some holes that these go into. Okay, and they had a little bit of silicone, which, by the way, was not sticky anymore. It wasn't. It's tough to get off of there. So, I don't know, somehow. Um, these passages are pretty clean. However, these two had gunk around the passage. There's still some right here. A little bit of gunk. So, um, I'm not sure <laughs> if that contributed to 
to Nesquare. Not. I don't know. Either way, we're when we get these off, we're gonna clean them up, clean everything, and wipe everything down, make everything look shiny and new. <sighs> so let's find the 17 again. Let's see if that'll work. 17. Nope. Let's try 16. This is over here. 16. 16 is there. So it's a 16 mil. And basically, I want to start on the inside. Work, work, uh, start from the inside and work your way out in sequence. What that usually means is I'm going to start at one point and then go no sorry i want to start with either these two or these two and work out going in sequence you know like a star pattern or what what have you uh i do not have the numbered sequence exactly so um It's gonna be mostly like like this one, 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 something along those lines. Okay. So these are probably gonna be tough, sorta. Let's see. Loose. Okay, so I'll just break them loose. Come up to this one and then break it loose. Okay, probably swivel socket. Oh man, I just pinched my thumb. Okay, swivel sockets aren't the best for head bolts. <laughs> I've got a 15 millimeter breaking heart. Yeah, so don't do swivel sockets. That's probably too long of an extension. I don't have a 16 millimeter. I'm not sure, maybe 5 eighths would work. Okay, let's try. Yeah, there we go, 5 eighths. If you don't have a 16 millimeter deep well, it's a 5 8 Okay, let's go to this one. Okay, let's go to this one. Okay, let's go over here. Okay, let's go over this one. Okay, now these ain't too terribly tight, so uh, I'm not too worried about a tiny bit of warpage because once these are clean, we can get a block sander and block sand the surface until we get that machine finish so um, that's probably towards the end when we're going to prep to put everything back on so um, when okay, I'm just loosening things up, and I might have some 
Kuchen. Come out. And we got all these pretty loose. You can pull these out. Keeping a note of how long they are. They're all the same head, but take note of how long they are because I'm probably going to tell you these top ones are probably the longer ones. And these back here are the short ones. Let's test that there. First back one we pull up is like this. There's, oh my god, this one's kind of burnt. It's like a black. So, pretty short, right? Let's pull up this one. Judas Priest. Come on. Okay. Let's try to pull this up. <clears throat> Lay it across here. Now, let's use this hand and kind of pry up with it. Hold it up a little bit with your thumb. So it doesn't fall back down in the hole loosely. So there we go. Pretty long, you can tell. Okay, so this was the front bolt, and this one was the back bolt. So keep them in order and, and remember which which way those come out. I'll also keep these bolts with the um, head. And I can probably even stick them back down in the holes once I get these off. Just to remember where they went. Keep track of them. There's that one. <sighs> um, so these were, these were at, I would say probably about 90 to 100 foot pounds. <clears throat> At least they should have been. Because, you know, you got to go 90 foot pounds and then you got to go another 90 degrees, which probably adds the 10 pounds. Or even 80 and then 10. 90 degrees roughly gives you 10 more pounds of holding pressure on a bolt I would imagine and it's not much okay there's these I'll stick these up here This one's gotta come out. Okay. Um, we can 
lift these heads off they might be a little heavy for you so uh, if you can't lift uh, get someone get, I'm gonna have to go ahead and have you get someone to lift off the head for you okay <laughs> Does that line sound to any vaguely familiar? <laughs> we, uh, we watched that, I don't know, about a week ago. <sighs> and yeah, it's still funny to this day where uh, <laughs> he says, Have you seen my stapler? And it's still funny. <laughs> so it's, you know, that's the comic relief. When you got someone that says silly things in a movie. So. Dang. I'm already starting to sweat. Dang. Right. It's only 78 in here. Okay. All the things are off on the back head we can lift it up off the dowels yep there goes the coolant okay you can have coolant inside the head uh the the uh, piston let it drain out into your pan down there if you don't put a pan down there you better Oh, these ain't too bad. These ain't heavy. And there's the underside. Not too bad. It's still a little crusty. But I left the spark plugs in into the holes. So we're gonna take these and set these over here. I laid them on its side so you don't want to lay them down on the machined surface. Of course you can set them upright too. But since I have um well I, I was gonna say since I have a kitty cat in here, I don't want him knocking it over, but it's up against something I don't think he'll mess with it too much. So, yeah, we got lots of coolant in the chambers, tops of the head, which is normal. We just got to get it out of there. Right now, it's keeping it from rusting, so I want to keep that in there for now until we're ready to clean the piston heads, okay? And, oops, sorry. Uh, we're going to take a look at this backside gasket looks like it's um, the metal with the rubber side kind of feels like it's a rubber rubber gasket but it's coming off of there just a little at a time that piece came off of it Okay. There you go. <clears throat> gasket number one. That's the backside gasket. Yeah, I think these were both these gaskets I think were ready to change. Because I got gunk in a few passages. So yeah, we're gonna have to Yes sir. Okay, I'll keep this with the head. Uh, that's when I'm getting dirty on a Monday morning, Monday afternoon, excuse me. Monday afternoon. Okay, now, okay. 
We'll start with this one. Oh, over here. Okay, break it loose. Come over to. Ooh, that's gonna be in the way. Uh, this bracket is gonna be in the way. So before you go any further, we can probably maybe get a different socket real quick. I'll try to get it out of there. We don't want you on there anymore. Uh, okay. Plan B. We'll just turn it until it comes out. And this little bracket thingy or shield could be a bracket. Is in the way of the bolt that I'm trying to get to. We're not going to want him in there anymore. This little old bracket with this 14 mil got stuck on there. <laughs> Drop it. There you go. And I'll keep the bolt with the hole in the bracket. Okay. Easy peasy. Let's get this 5 8 script to us. Let's get this 15 millimeter back on there. And crack this one loose. Okay. So da da da. This one. Okay. Now let's crack loose. Come over to here. Don't want it. Over here to the side. This one seems pretty tight. No, oh, just needed leverage. Yeah, just needed some leverage. Okay. And then go. Whew. Yeah. That one is. This one is okay. And then come over to this last one. Oh, yeah, they're not too bad. I'm gonna have to slide my pan to the front. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, this, by the way, yeah, it's the uh camshaft sensor that one that I, I think I called it something but as you can see the camshaft is right there right next to the cylinder walls so uh, <coughs> excuse me that's definitely not an overhead valve <clears throat> so yeah we'll, we'll see um this side so far this one i can see it's still nice and shiny and i still see the the uh the marks, the, um, the, the scratch marks, I can't think of it right now, give me a little bit of time, so, um, 
the bore marks. I can see that. So, yeah. Um, I don't think I'll have to do anything with the bore of the cylinder wall. Sitting on that one, I can go on. But yeah, I think all these are pretty loose. And we're going to see the cylinder that's misfiring. I took that one, I took the back one off to save this one for last. I'm going to spend a few extra minutes kind of looking at it. So. You don't want to miss that action and see exactly what causing this fire. So far we've seen, you know, I got some gunk and some holes and some passageways. You've seen that my injector was different. Uh, tearing it down to this point, the gaskets that I was seeing hadn't, none of the gaskets look too worn out. Um, so, I took the exhaust headers all the way off, so we will most likely find the culprit in this fire on this gasket, the cylinder one gasket. We will see. I'm just as anxious as you. This teardown. has been pretty long and tedious <laughs> some without sound that's my bad hopefully you guys mustered through it you guys got through those videos okay so on those you can't hear anything i mostly just ramble on <clears throat> so i'm um, just Watching what I do, if you have this type of engine, this, that way you can concentrate on what I'm doing other than what I'm saying. Otherwise, I mean, yeah, you can't hear me say what size this is or where did that go or what's this. Um, That's the bad part about it. Most of the times I'm trying to figure out what size these are anyway. Uh, I'd say 60% of the time I've been doing this, I've pretty much guessed what size of bolt it is or nut. So. It's not a high probability. Still not bad. This is a DIY home project anyway. It's not like I'm trying to impress anyone. Uh, chances are your next project you're not gonna um, you're, gonna, you're gonna see that You're not going to have the same size bolts and stuff in the places you think you're going to know, unless if you've been doing it for years, like an actual mechanic, you've been seeing the size of these bolt heads and nuts and everything for quite a long time. So they know. They know. 
that's what makes them so fast in their progression is you know not only do they know what to do to get to the spot they need to work on is they don't spend half the time trying to find out the size of the bolts the bolt heads or the nuts <clears throat> Plus, they use impacts and uh, air tools. So that gets the job done pretty quick. Here's the bottom ones. Then the top. I got a, a big long shallow pan down there that, well, um, it worked all right when I was draining the coolant. I also have a spill pad that's larger than the pan. When I went to go drain the coolant, I wanted to look for something that will help the flow of the coolant down into the pan. So I got this big old silver cookie sheet pan at uh, what was it? Uh, O'Reilly's at my local O'Reilly's and I kind of channeled it, bent it, tried to channel it so that it would go down into my drip pan. I took a hole saw and I drilled a hole right in the center and I bent the pan a little bit to channel the fluid down to that hole so it would go into the drip pan. That worked out pretty well. So that's what I got down there. Catching some of this coolant that's coming out of these heads. In case if you wanted to know what you can use. I also have the spill pad. It's a pretty large spill pad. I got it at Walmart. So that of course is underneath that pan. That's what's down there on the floor right now. Catching this coolant. <clears throat> okay, that. Uh. All right, let me slide my pan forward. Uh. It's not gonna be much. You're not going to have a whole lot of coolant, just enough to want to put a pan down there. And we're going to lift up our head. Actually, I got my wrench. We're going to need to take off this bracket for the dipstick that's attached to the head. And that was a 14 millimeter. Where did I put it? And put it back over here. Yep. Okay. So we got a 14 millimeter with the same size as that silly bracket. That was over there. There we go. Maybe. No, maybe it's not a 14. Okay. Well, screw you. 5 7 16 then. Yes. Holy mother. Alright. Okay. okay, here's a 12 point socket 14. Try that. No, that's still loose. Okay, so it's a different size. Let's go with a 9 16th. 
Well, I think 9 16 is the same as the 14. And so let's try 12. 12 millimeter. Nope, 13. So we're going to have to find 13. <coughs> Founder. Boom. Got him. 13 millimeter. Crack the loose. Okay, I'm going to also lay some t uh, shop towels down there to soak up some of that. soak up some uh, coolant because again I have a cat okay take that bend that a little bit out of the way not too much just enough loosely so we do not lose it that'd be a smart thing and clear not ready to do a operation Procedure. Okay, I'm just gonna lift the head up. You can hear it. Dribbling. I'm gonna lift the head up. Okay. There you go. There you go, folks. The cylinder. Yeah, these cylinders are they're kind of crusty but not too bad. Okay, let me go set this down. Pick up my rat again. These tools, tools always freaking fall. Let me take a look at here. Oh yeah, we got some plugged up. It's a plugged up uh, passage, or yeah, the hole right there. It's not that it's plugged up, it's kind of torn right there. You got a little bit of failure right there. <coughs> okay, I'm gonna peel off the gasket so we can investigate it a little more. Okay. Yeah, yeah, got some crusty stuff. So, yeah, I think it was due for a change. <laughs> what do you guys think? <clears throat> so I'm gonna put that over by the head and take a pick. Get yourself a pick, not a. Here, pick. You're gonna pick up some of this stuff. So when we do the cleaning, we can get all this back to normal get a nice surface this block's gonna need probably some sanding yeah some of the gasket material we can scrape off and then sand it down a little bit and check it we'll check it for straight and level and true and all that good stuff one thing I do want to do though also is pull out my lifters. Lifters. Um, lifters. One of these have been making some noise. Maybe several of them. But. Okay. So I'm using a 10. So 
swivel socket, 10 millimeter swivel socket on these lifters. Uh, so like I said, for right now, I'm leaving the coolant inside the, the chamber until we can do the cleaning on the block part and the sanding everything that'll be that'll be the last thing to prep before the new gasket and the the heads go back on so so we won't have downtime between when the heads go on and the block gets clean you know so plus I'm gonna have to pull the timing and stuff so um, I will have to get this engine at TDC make sure my marks are lined up perfectly if you don't do that uh, guess what you're gonna be like well, I want to start well maybe you should have checked timing that's aside from having I was the last like, aside from having cylinders and a crankshaft and a drive shaft and and your all the internals timing is a really important commodity in an engine. If you're on the right timing, it's not gonna start. You're gonna end up probably blowing your gas leak in. So if you want to do this DIY, you gotta do this right and slowly and make sure you you know do these things right. As you're doing it by yourself, you know you <clears throat> you want to be able to take pride in your work and make sure that you get everything right. Sometimes you're gonna have okay, you're gonna, sometimes you're gonna have problems, you know. Like okay, so when you get everything on and everything buttoned up and everything, well, you still gotta you gotta add fuel pressure, you gotta add oil pressure. You know, you got to do all those things before the startup, you know, you got to prime your, prime your system, fuel, your oil, so, I think, as, as far as spark plugs, I think maybe I'm, I might change them out, oh, yeah, pull these things out my lifters here okay that's the uh, front and this the back <coughs> keep them like this back and we're going to keep these together too so yeah it looks like battery's dead on the camera again anyway i'm going to pull these lifters out of here keeping them in and uh